Level up your hunting game and join the cause. Help preserve small town Texas hunting culture and become a more successful hunter by learning the best ways to squeeze the most out of your budget and precious time out in the field. Welcome to the Feed Bandit Podcast. Here are your resident bandits, Richard Kitchlow and Jimmy Byrne. Thank God I am blessed with the ability to, to get up, take my dog, put my poop shoes on. So I have a designated pair of flip-flops that call my poo shoes. Because, you know, when your dog has explosive diarrhea, you know, and every hour on the hour and you have a small dog leg left yard, you run out of yard. And so instead of, you know, tiptoeing around like a 300-pound fat fairy, you know, I'm like, dude, I'm done. I'm going to ruin these shoes. I'm walking right through the poo. And let me tell you what, it is, it feels good. It sound, it, it's wonderful. I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> it sounds like you're walking through like a really saturated grass. Oh, yeah, just like I'm walking through a casserole dish. You know? <laughs> yeah, and, and the great thing is these are thicker heels or thicker flip-flops. So if I step in a really big pile, it doesn't crest my foot, you know, crest nice. <laughs> Well, I was gonna ask, like, can you flip them on and off easily without touching? Oh yeah, the oh yeah, key, oh, yeah. oh yeah. So they, they just sit right there, and as as that, mm, I love my <laughs> dog, love her to death. But she wakes up, she's har at the door. I'm like, God damn it! I grab my flashlight, which nine out of ten times I, I end up knocking down. And it wakes my wife up, and then I right. go outside, you know, just tromping through all this diarrhea, ten thousand <laughs> degrees. 45,000 degrees humidity. It stinks. It's nasty. <laughs> I'd end up wiping her bottom. So <laughs> point is, what I, the whole point of telling about little, that little antidote is there are some times when I can't really, you know, I, I do get yeah, tired. But, uh, I lack emotion. <laughs> and I, you know, want to run my truck off, off a bridge or something like that. So right. I had quite a few of those lately, yeah. But luckily for our listeners, that's not tonight, right? No, God, no, no. Because I've been recording. No, did, oh, damn you! <laughs> that's good. I did not know that. No, it, it, it hey, listen, it, it's been great. I, uh, I think I slept through the night last night. Oh, so um, yeah, no, it's 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 been really nice. Of course, you know, by by the time I wake up, you know, you, you literally, you know, she sleeps on her bed. And she's got her little stairs. And so I, you, you know, the time I wake up, I hear her kind of stretch. I'm like, yeah, here we go. Clock started. And it's like her poo is starting to come, you know, so you gotta get her down those stairs as her tail starts to arc. And if it's a good day, she'll go on my poo flip-flops. You know, if it's a bad day, she'll leave one chunk there in the, uh, you know, the, 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 the middle of the door area and then uh, the rest out in the yard. So nice. Nice. Yeah. Well, so this is going to stay in the podcast because I thought it was amusing. Oh, no. no, it is very amusing. Hey, listen, and, and I, know, so, I know our listeners, they've dealt with geriatric dogs before. Well, that's what I was going to say. Uh, just to perhaps, and this is a new listener listening for the first time. This is a, this is a, she, she's an older dog yep. that has done, definitely done her time. Yep. <laughs> oh, Yeah. And she's just kind of relaxing now. I guess part of the she story, is. But. Yeah, she she is my bird. She is my bird dog. Um, you know, she's <clears throat> a lot of stories. Just had. I mean, she's my partner. You know, and just an mm-hmm. amazing, an amazing life. But you know, she's like Jimmy said, she's old, and um, you know, we're definitely in the twilight of her life. She went duck hunting this year, some late season dove hunting, which is great. She can't. Oh, she can't see. She definitely can't hear. Or at least she's got selective hearing. So. You know, she's been, you know, the discipline factors out the window. You know, she harasses you when you eat dinner. It's fantastic. Um, so, yeah, we're just letting her just be a senior. It's great. Taking away her keys, of course. No more driving. But um, <laughs> other than that, you know. I always wondered if, uh, you know, the older people, if they know at the at that moment when they parked the car for the last right. time that that was actually going to be the last time they ever drove. drove. Oh, God, that's, that's horrible. You know what I mean? I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I'll tell you what. My my dad, my dad tells a story um, about his father. You know, my my grandfather, when he was approaching, you know, the end of his driving career, couldn't have come fast enough because he had one of those land. Well, you're familiar. You had the Lincoln, mm-hmm. one of the well, land guy, Chrysler, Cap- New Yorker, Fifth Avenue. Yeah, Chrysler, New Yorker. Excuse me. Got a great car, by the way. <laughs> 
incredible back seats. Phenomenal. <laughs> anyway, he had one of those land yacht Cadillacs. And, you know, of course, one of those doors that are, are, are literally the size of most modern day cars. And he opened up that door smack dab into a brand new Porsche, uh, something or another. Oh, and just, just destroyed it, you know. And <laughs> my dad was like, yeah, we're, we're done. Just, <laughs> that's it. Like, that's what? What'd you say? <laughs> oh god yeah so getting old as a human and a dog it just sucks there's no doubt yeah. and speaking of getting old i don't know if people can hear in the background but uh my two young children are screaming out there so apologies for the the background noise oh i thought uh, that was i thought that was your bride <laughs> just throwing a temper tantrum right <laughs> well i could have been but this time not this time not, right. not yelling at me so this time so <laughs> but if people are out there listening uh what, you know wondering what you're listening to welcome to the feed bandit podcast yes this is uh jimmy l bandito here i'm joined with the corn bandit richard <laughs> <I'll> be- <laughs> funny stories hola absolutely <laughs> listen uh-huh. that's what we try to do you know that, that's the goal this here of this program is to this uh, program. Have some fun. yeah <laughs> so Talk to us about what you think about upcoming hunting, upcoming hunting seasons. We're at the end of July, right. beginning right. of August right. right now. So we're, we're a month away from dove season in right. Texas, right? Yep. So, man, a lot happened this year. You know, we had this gigantic freeze back in yes. uh, at the beginning of the year. Yep. Uh, it's actually been, in my, I think, a pretty mild summer up until about a week ago. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't remember, I don't remember a summer that's been this mild and this wet. I, they're, they're well, no, that's not true. There was one, I think it was 2015. I thought it was 2011, but 2011 sucked my butt. It was so freaking hot and it didn't rain a damn drop, but I think it was 15 that was, that was similar, but that was just June and July and August was, oh my fuck, I mean, it was terrible so freaking hot but now yeah you're you're exactly right this this summer has been I, i've never seen anything like it i mean to hit our to hit our first 100 degree day uh really overall in the state in late july i mean god i, I don't know when that's happened of course you look at i don't know if you look if you look at the weather for next week uh no let's look now oh yeah take a look see what you see i mean are you kidding me well, I'll, I'll, I'll just cheat. We're, we're talking low 90s in the chat. Oh, right? oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's not that, that's September weather, right? Yeah, now. 90. So, wow. you, you know, I always look at the, the summer as um, we'll kind of start in the summer and work our way back. I, I always look at the summer when it comes to, you know, the wildlife, especially in, in, in Texas, as really kind of the really one of the, the, the key moment in every critter's life. Whereas I think a lot of people look at the winter. You know, it, it is a key moment in the critter's life when you're talking about, you know, states in the northeast or um, the upper north southwest or, you know, all those other kind of directions. So, you know, Montana, Wyoming and whatnot, if the winter's really rough. But, you know, it, 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 it affects your, your uh, it affects your animals, of course. And, of course, here, you know, if we have a miserable drought, of course, that if we're in a miserable drought, low water, you know, that's. That's gonna that's gonna force all your you know your game to 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 really focus around the you know, the available water sources, put some more up for predation, so on and so forth. So you know when when we have a a wet when we have a wet spring and a wet summer and especially a mild summer, I mean that that is that is just phenomenal. I mean I I don't know that I've ever seen and I don't know if there is one. I don't think you can do a survey because deer don't speak English, but. You know, I, I would be curious to see, uh, you know, how much stress the, the deer go through, you know, when it, when it comes to the summer. And, you know, does it, does it stress them out? Because obviously, as we know, stress is, is, is bad for you. No matter where you're, whether you got hooves or feet, it's bad for you. So I'd always be curious to see, okay, you know, does a milder summer lead to to better milk production for does does it lead to better antlers because you know as everybody knows or most people should know when it, when a buck ingests anything it goes to their body first then to their antlers you know so does a milder summer less stress more forage more water lead to 
you know, and, and then of course less stress lead to better body conditions. Now, I and and and, and bigger deer, and I, I have to think it would, uh, but it just makes sense because then I just kind of answered my own question there because you do have more water and you do have more forage. So, well, you know, th- also th- yeah. uh, maybe meat that's better for you. I don't because if the animal yeah. stress so much and kind of sweating yeah. or. Um, that's sweat, a, sweat, sweating its uh, tail off, yeah. if you will. Yeah. You know, maybe it's in relaxed that more. Well, I just about to <laughs> say, yeah, if they've got some sort of yeah. gland that just starts going yeah. bananas when they're stressed. That's a really good point. I never thought about that. So, you know, th- this summer, as again, as you've said, has just been has just been incredibly wet. You know, I was at Rancho Bandito this week, this past week, and again, we're July, folks. As Jimmy said, we're a month out, thank God, from dove season, and. Um, you know the fact the fact that the all the tanks runneth over uh, is just amazing. We I was on one of our pastures that you know that we frequently drive, and I couldn't even see some of the trails. I mean that that is how much grass has grown up, and and it's funny with our our cattle grazing program. It's really kind of changed the way that we we need to do that. Now obviously it's not long term, but you know we've had some pastures that we we graze cattle in. And then we rotate them out. And now I'm thinking, golly, we can we can bring these guys back in here for you know 60 days if we wanted to and save another pasture for for the winter. So um it, it's definitely changed up a, a, a lot of our thoughts and a lot of the way we we do things. You know, as far as the dove are concerned, that is obviously being the you know, kind of the priority because we got that coming up in about a month. Um you know, typically a, uh, just like every animal, you know, that, you know, if you've got, you know, if it's wetter, if it's cooler, you know, I think they're, I think they're going to do a hell of a lot better. Now we've already got, thank God, a surplus of, of morning dove and a white wing doves as well. Um, and of course, there's all this rain, they've got ample places to drink, uh, which again, the whole double-edged sword is great for them, bad for us, right? When it comes to hunting, especially if you're dependent on hunting over a tank, which as you all know, we are. Um, you know, that also being said with the amount of rain that we've had, the seed bearing plants, there's a hell of a lot more than them, you know? So again, that could potentially disperse, you know, disperse the dove when it comes to opening day or for your dove hunting period. Uh, something else that I, I have noticed being out there at Rancho Bandido is that with that monster freeze that we had, you know, that affected the entire state back in February, you know, some of the plants that, that normally are showing, you know, fruit by now, such as the uh, prickly pear cactus, okay? Uh, the prickly pears are, they're, they're out, but they're still green, okay? Normally by this year, by this time of year, the prickly pears are as ripe as can be. They're ready to harvest or eat them, you know, whatever you want to do with them. Uh, they're still green. Uh, the, uh, the Mustang grapes are on the vine already, and they're already bright, bright purple, which is something I normally don't see. Uh, Mexican plums in, in our yard at Rancho Bandito that I planted for the wildlife. We've already had one of those. We already had a crop of one of those, and they typically don't come until uh, October. So it's just kind of all over the place, uh, but, it, but it's definitely caused by that, by that freeze. So um, also with that being said, you know, those freezes are really important when it comes to cracking seed coats for, for a lot of the, you know, for sunflowers, for example, for wildflowers. One of the places that we dove hunt does have some sunflowers, but they're not, they haven't even headed out yet and they won't even be ready uh, until probably late September. Whereas another spot that we, we typically keep some cows, they've already got some flowers and they're already starting to die. So uh, th- it'd be interesting to hear from everybody else what this weather uh, has done to, you know, to kind of their area and their hunting as it has it jacked up their, their vegetation, and, and will that have an effect on the, the season? Well, and the question, the big question is, uh, what do you think it's going to do for the acorns? Yeah. Acorn crop? Well, uh, that, that's a, that's actually, it's a very good question because a lot of folks have had a lot of trees that uh, that were really damaged and, and, and stunned. And, you know, unfortunately, a lot of folks, uh, you know, saw happy folks, especially here in Dallas, were like, well, oh, boy, yeah, tree's dead. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, cut it down, you know. Well, you know, listen, trees are a living thing, too. Man, let me seem like a freaking hippie here, but they are. And you got to give them time to recover. I know the Burr Oaks have had some, some issues, and they got some dead branches and whatnot. So, um, 
on some like we were just down Horseshoe Bay and there was a couple of bur oaks there that that had you know that looked like a skeleton but they had little you know little green life coming out of them you know they were just but they just got hit hard so no absolutely I think the acorn crop is is definitely going to take a hit this year um, the other thing that I don't think a lot of people think about is you know when you've got these big oaks and these pecans and whatnot um you know, sometimes they're not used to all that added weight of snow and ice and we had it i mean god how we'd have for a week you know so at least at rancho bandito i saw a lot of of down limbs uh, and of course on each limb you can have you know who knows how many acorns it'll be interesting to see if that plays into it you know in, in, into the whole thing as well but uh, I have seen quite a few acorns uh, on, on some of our live oaks and, you know, some red oaks. So far, nothing appears to be out of normal. Have not checked the pecans, but they're kind of they're kind of seasonal as, as well. So, um, yeah, you know, and, and I'll tell you, if, if we do have a poor acorn and pecan crop, uh, I, I think it's very fitting. And it's kind of crazy. You know, Mother Nature takes care of itself with this cool weather. And all of the rain that we've had, uh, and it looks like we're going to continue to get, you know, in, until into September when things really start to cool out, you know, for, for, the, for the long run, um, all the forage that we've had, you know, all the, the forage that we have added because of this weather, maybe it replaces what we've lost with these trees from the freeze. Uh, it, it's nuts, man. I don't know. Yeah, that, <clears throat> that'll be interesting to see because really the last couple of years, uh, we, along with probably a lot of other people, have had have com you know had a love hate relationship with the acorns. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh God, yes. Yeah. So it's uh, if, they, if they disappear, will it re be replaced, like you said, by the other stuff? That yep. We could, no, we there's you that there's... Uh, that frustration, at least on the the seeing the animals. Uh, Absolutely. Front. Yeah. Uh, but no, yeah. we have, no, for sure. And then, you know, it's... Um, but you can't hate it that much. Honestly. No, it's, no, you can't. Well, and, and really, you can't <laughs> hate it at all because there's nothing yeah. to do. You know, there is just not there's a damn thing yeah. you can do about it. And then we've always talked about how you can't play Mother Nature. And boy, let me tell you, what about you know, February 2021 is, is a good uh, lesson for that. I mean, boy, that, that freeze was something else. Um, I actually blame that on my daughters because... You know, the 10-year-old and the 6-year-old, bitch, and complain. I want snow. I want snow, Daddy. Why can't we have a white Christmas? Listen, <laughs> listen my first white Christmas when I was 33 years old, my, and so that means my daughter was three, you know, and, and, and my other daughter, the 6-year-old, saying, it's not fair. I want snow. And, of course, here we have this week-long snowmageddon thing. I'm like, you happy now? Yeah, uh-huh. You good? <laughs> Some of your friends' houses and your your grandparents' houses flooded because of this stuff. Right. <laughs> oh man, it, it's it's crazy. But yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see how how things kind of you know how they how they translate this this hunting season. Uh, something else that I'm really keeping an eye on, you know, with, with these cooler temperatures, uh, and and it's not necessarily always the case. But if it's cooler down here, think about what it is in Canada. Think about what it is and the what it, what it is, yeah. Uh, how it is up there in North Dakota and whatnot, where you're in the prairie pothole area, where you got a lot of these ducks, okay. And you know, hey, listen, I've seen teal at Ran blue wing teal, love them uh, at Rancho Bandito as early as August 12th. You know, so I'd be curious as are they getting the cool enough weather to start blowing those birds down here? Um, mm -hmm. It will be interesting. Huh. Needless to say, I'm not excited. Though. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Well, he's still got to wait at least. Uh, let's see. Uh, Twenty. Uh, yeah, about uh, you know a month. He's still got a month. To you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. When we get to August though, I'm normally so glazed over. It just doesn't. You know, make it here. It's here. It's here. <laughs> there, of course. Well, and the other thing is now, now that the tech football is, I, I can't even talk about it without dry heaving. Well, uh, that's that's an interesting topic there. It's, oh my god. Oh my. I'm of two minds on this one. Truly, yeah. Uh, I well, you've heard my, you've heard my. Yeah. I, I then our, our our dear friend Tyson does not seem to agree with me. <laughs> wow. uh, which is fantastic. Oh, <laughs> uh, what a nightmare! So I just like I, I'm literally gonna have to just, I, you know, I don't know. I'm gonna have to sideline myself because I'm just so passionate about tech football and just how. Uh, 
you know, we have been down, and then of course this just makes it even worse. So, well, I I am preparing myself for the American Conference or whatever the hell it's called. Oh no way! Just really? Well, I mean, you don't want to die of a heart attack when it actually happens. I know, I know. <laughs> and then listen, hey, nothing against you know, nothing against you know, Tulane and. And all those other ones, but God, I just, man, I, it, to me, you know, to me, uh, God, here we go. We're on this topic now. To me, it, 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 the, the state of Texas, the people of Texas are the losers here. Oh, know, for God's God. sakes, you know, football is, is a Texas sport. Is boy, you know, I don't think it was born here, but it should have been. It's been made incredible here. It is the lifeblood of every small town in, and big town in this state. And now here you go. Your main schools are not even potentially going to play each other. That is a tragedy. That is a tragedy. Except for the two big ones that now may play each other again. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, no, I, 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 they, they, they might. You know, who knows? It, it, it is a, as my grandfather, as my grandfather, as my father, like, this is sin. It is a sin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It is absolutely it is an absolute shame, and it just makes me sick. And, and I'll tell you what, this just proves how greedy this world has really gotten, you know? Oh, yeah. What's hilarious about it is you have UT, mm -hmm. whose athletic program makes by far the most money. You know, Slightly. Any other school, mm -hmm. with the closest being Ohio State, and then it drops off, really, you know, from there. Right. And it's, is it really a matter of more money? <laughs> I, I don't know. Yes, maybe the, the the way they're looking at it, and it, this is it might actually make it pretty smart. And this is what kind of what I thought about was, you know, they're going more and more towards college sports, especially the big sports, being kind of more like you know minor league for for uh, pros, right. where the talk has been more more and more about hey, should we pay athletes? Well, maybe we, what they're looking at is hey, if that happens. We're not. We may not be able to compete paying people from like the, the SEC schools paying uh, players and then being able to get the SEC money because right. more money they they're figuring maybe more money will flood in because right. now it'll be like an arms race even more yeah. like paying oh, yeah. players. Whereas you know, and, and that's a really good know. point. So, yeah, so how the hell we, is we that go fair now. for us? The, how is that? But they're figuring they need to go now to get the more money to be able to do that. Right. Well, they don't how, have it for us? How, how are we – well, okay. No, I mean, I, I guess, well, believe me, UT, you know, you, Texas has, you know, they, they've, had the, they've had the shot of the cream of the crop. I mean, God, for how many years we've been doing this, you know? Yeah. Uh, for, you know, 20 or 30 years, well, longer than that. You know, they are the mm -hmm. University of Texas. They've always had the cream of the crop, and they still get beat. Um, uh -huh. Of course, now that if you may be paying them, it just makes it even more difficult for us to beat them. Well, hey, we may not play them now. Yeah, it'll be like officially, they'll be the triple A of the NFL. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll be the we'll double, in the double A league of the NFL, yeah. basically. Yeah. But you know what? Here's, how, here's, the, here's the positive. Go with this. Go Stay with me here. Don't start with the Pac-12. I'll kill you. Well, no, I don't, I don't want to be. I don't really know if I want to deal with that. I think that's what I'm kind of like. Could we dominate the American athletic well, conference? Yeah. We should be able to. We should be able to. If yeah. the alumni base didn't fall apart and fall right. away because of this, if they doubled down and said, okay, fine, do it, go. But you know what? We're going to dominate this conference. Win it every damn year. We're going to be the right. Oklahoma of the American right. uh, Athletic Conference or whatever. Right. And then the, that conference, if we were to join and the other teams uh, – it would be big enough to where, I mean, they'd have to be like, okay, top two teams, top one team, top four teams, whatever. If right. especially it goes to like a 16-team playoff, they'd have, well, to, they'd have yeah. to pick one or two teams. every. Right. So even if you're in this conference and you dominate it, you have a chance you still have a if chance. you're in a playoff. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, no, I, 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 I can, I can see. Like if we dominate it, we wouldn't be, get beaten up at – Throughout the year, like all the SEC, SEC teams would be. Oh my God! Can, can you imagine? I mean, again, I'm always going to root for the state school because that's that's what my that's what I do. You know, it just infuriates me that Texas would do this to us. But uh, boy, that's that's a 
you know, I've always looked at the SEC calendars. It's like, boy, who are we playing today? The Cowboys, the Giants, the Rams. You know, I mean, it's just there's no easy opponent on there. Uh, and, I, and I love how they're calling Texas the Vanderbilt of the South. There's exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, the Commodores don't like, I'm sure. So. <laughs> Oh, God. Well, you know what? Um, honestly, something like this happening just kind of fits with the, the mode of how this world is going. In the, in totally. The, this is a perfect you know 2021 thing. Oh, God. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I can only imagine. What Following 2020, happen. you know? Uh, I could, yeah. I can only imagine what's going to happen next year. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Hold on to your butts. Oh, yeah. No, seriously. It's like, you know, we're just going to stop wearing clothes. We're, you know, yeah. yeah. Which, of course, that's got its pros and cons. But uh, Well, all clothes are sexist. Oh, if, no, they are. If there are no genders anymore, then why are we wearing clothes? That's right. No, exactly. <laughs> and, and that red shirt is offensive to everybody <laughs> who identifies as red. God. It's just everyone who has red blood. Oh, that's everybody. yes. Yeah, oh, oh, that yeah, red. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's true. Oh my god, <laughs> that's ridiculous. As we uh, go off the rails, we are now big time, <laughs> big time, dumb. Yeah, if you, you, if you look at our, our, our social media, um, oh god, but talk about dumb. And I, I literally lost like a centimeter of enamel on my teeth because they, um. One of the things I, I posted, oh, my God, it just makes me so angry. And just I need to find the dumb MF who 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 made this made this happen. And I want to say, listen, I, first of all, before I kill you, know <laughs> that you have too much in time on your hands. You rotten piece of you know what. Some idiot. Some idiot. Are, y are you familiar with the big the big head Asian carp? Oh, the fish? Yeah, the fish, yeah. Uh, I'm familiar with carp, but not okay. big head Asian. All right, well, th this is the big head Asian. That sounds very offensive to me. There you go. You see even what I'm I, getting at. Even though yeah, I'm not yeah. Asian. So, yeah, so the, 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 Asian, the big head Asian carp has basically gotten into these waterways and, and, and literally can destroy an entire ecosystem. They, they turn it from an ecosystem to a monoculture, which basically means Jeez. there's just one thing there, and then you're, you're screwed. Um, well, some idiot has come up there and so we need to change because it's offensive to Asians. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, as I put on our, our Facebook stuff, just like I, I just want, I, I don't know. I mean, I just like, I, I mean, what would it I mean? Like, think about the guys who made the big cheese tablet. I mean, where are they going to put them out of business? I mean, it's a great product. I right. Just, I just, it breaks me. I can't, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, big cheese tablets. God, those are great. <laughs> I had, a, I had yeah. my old boss, uh, he, he would always say, well, I mean, if we got to sit down and talk about it, I'll, just, I'll come, I'll we'll sit down around the table, I'll pull out the big chief tablet and the number two pencil, and we'll draw it up. <laughs> You're like, yes, you have me at big chief. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Well, sir, that's all I got for tonight. I think so you got all right. Well, that was fun. That was a good one. I hope people were uh, no, was. entertained on that one. Um, oh, I, I just, uh, you know, I want to thank you, the listener, for tuning in and uh, listening, giving us some some of your time, some of your day, whether it's walking around. Like, I like to listen to podcasts while I walk with Biscuit a lot nice. or driving, you know, whether you're driving or not. You know, if you see us pop up in your, uh, your feed, tune in. You know, well, hopefully we'll keep uh, entertaining you. So we really appreciate it. Definitely appreciate the support, folks. Yes, very much. And uh, with that, I want to thank everybody. Uh, you want to sign us off? Take us away? Yep. Remember, folks, now more than ever, and we keep saying that, but now you got to support your local feed store, okay? You know, one thing I will say really quick, end of July here, uh, August 15th, you can get your Texas or you can get your Texas hunting license, okay? I know you can go to a big box store and do it. I know you can do it, but I want to encourage everybody, everybody, to call ahead, make sure you can do it at your local feed store and go down there, get your license done at that feed store. They do get some money from it. It's a big deal to them. Uh, do that. Buy your shotgun shells. Buy your supplies. Support your local feed store, folks, okay? Uh, this is where the, they are the original hunting stores. Let's, let's, let's help bring that business back to them. There you go. You guys heard it.
You heard it from the big chief himself, Corn Bandit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I just done spoke it with my number two voice. <laughs> wow. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Y'all take care. Thanks for listening to the Feed Bandit Podcast. If you like what we discuss on the show, be sure to sign up to our email list to get even more killer hunting ideas, tips, tricks, and exclusive deals on innovative hunting gear and services delivered straight to your inbox. Sign up over at FeedBandit.com or simply by texting the word BANDIT to 33777. See you on the next one. And remember, support your local feed store.